Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I'm ready to do my full review on this wonderful little knife. This is the Urban EDC Voxnays F5.5, and it's an Urban EDC exclusive. I talked about in my unboxing and my first impressions that prior to this knife, Urban EDC wasn't really super on my radar. Now they are, because this knife is exceptionally good, and we're gonna kinda talk about why. But uh, this is basically a production version, which has been scaled down in size, of the Voxnays F5 model. From what I understand of Voxnays F series customs, he does 25 of them and then never again. So I don't think there will ever be more <laughs> of the custom F5, and uh, I will probably never get to own one. But I've always thought it was a cool knife, I've always thought they look good, and uh, I've always kind of like, I don't want to say dreamt of having one, that's more intense than what's been going on, but I've thought it would be cool to have one. So this is really awesome to me, that there's a production kind of variant of it. Granted, it's a different size from what I gather, but it's really, really cool. Um, so these were produced by Riat Knives. Some of my absolute favorite knives in the last couple of weeks and months have been knives from designers and companies here in the US that I really, really like that are built by Riat because Riat builds some of the best knives in the world right now, especially for the price that they come in at. And uh, in terms of the production knife game, they're absolutely murdering it. They are doing really, really good. Some people hate the idea of buying knives from China. So be it. Um, I don't have a problem with it, especially when it's connected to people who aren't in China that I really like, and it's their design and their project, and they're using them for manufacturing because they're the best option. I'll say that. Um, so this has been kind of a surprising one for me. This knife wasn't really on my radar. I didn't even follow Urban EDC supply closely, if at all. And then a buddy of mine got one of these. I started seeing them pop up and apparently they were a pre-order. I had missed out on that completely. Luckily, I was able to get one when they dropped the, the remainder of them. Um, after the time that I got this, they ended up dropping some in carbon fiber with LMAX, which was pretty cool. My buddy Kevin at Left EDC now has the titanium one, the carbon fiber one, and he just bought Kyle from DTOM Knives and Gear. He bought his uh, OD Green Micarta one. So if you want to see any of the other versions of this knife, because I just have the natural Micarta one, you can check them out on Kevin's channel because um, he has literally all of the other ones, which is cool. I understand why he's wanted to have multiples of this knife because it's genuinely really, really good. Um, so yeah, there were a couple of versions. This one is in M390 with natural Micarta nested liners. I think these liners are titanium. Um, in fact, I'm fairly certain that they are. We have a titanium backspacer, titanium loop over style clip. I'm not going to call it deep carry. <laughs> it's almost, almost deep carry. It does come almost to the end of the knife, but not quite. Um, so yeah, I happen to think that this is the best looking version of the knife. I really like natural micarta lately. I've just kind of been on a kick with it and this looks excellent to me. I love the way it looks. I love the proportions of this knife. I think it's phenomenal. So M390, Micarta, Titanium, it's kind of what we're playing with here. Um, yeah, so let's go through kind of my typical talking points and then we'll see if we can wrap it up at the end. But first let's go over ergos. Um, ergos on this knife are really, really good. You'll notice naturally my pointer finger gravitates up toward this forward choil, if you want to call it that. It's kind of a forward like three quarters of a choil, <laughs> um, and it's not super big. So I really, only if I'm doing lighter duty stuff, will use that forward choil, because I just put kind of the tip of my finger in here. I feel hesitant to wrap like more, like past this knuckle, I feel kind of uncomfortable because you're dancing with the edge there. Um, but yeah, fingertip, and then next three fingers down here, there's a jimping section right up on the spine there, typical Voxnase style. I love that, I want that jimping up there instead of back here, it just makes sense. So I get a great grip on here and it's super usable. It's indexed well, the edge is right where I feel that it is and uh, the ergos are, are good <laughs> with the forward choil. Again, if it was a little bit bigger, I wouldn't necessarily mind that because I'd like to be able to really wrap my hand into it. But for the like fine cutting tasks I do with this, it's great because I don't need more of my hand locked into the knife for light duty stuff anyways. Once I'm getting heavier duty, honestly, I just choke back and I put my pointer finger up here, 
my next two fingers and a half really land onto the kind of swell or, or curve back here and I can hammer grip, saber grip into here. My thumb still lands on that jimping which is really nice. I feel great control over the blade. It's really, really good in that way. Um, draw cut feels nice to me. I like that. Reverse grip feels really good to me. I dig that. Reverse grip draw cut, not very comfortable, but a rare grip to use anyways, so is what it is. Um, yeah, ergonomically, this knife is a big win. My only gripe is that the the choil is a little on the small side for me, but it's still a usable choil. It's not like, oh, I wish it even had a choil. just wish it was a little bit bigger. Um, yeah, so ergo's big win. Carry, let's talk about that. This knife is really light. The nested titanium liners, thin micarta. The profile overall, you'll see, is pretty thin, especially considering how thick this blade stock is. So it's not a featherweight of a knife, but it feels very light. It's very carryable. The micarta isn't so rough. It's pretty smooth. So going in and out of pocket, it's very easy. Um, the retention with this clip is great. It's a very good clip in terms of going in and out of pocket and how well it hangs on. It's a little bit, I should have mentioned this in Ergos, but it is a little bit pokey in my hand. It's not crazy. I feel like part of why I didn't mention it, frankly, is I've just carried this knife a lot and used it a lot and I've gotten used to it being there. So it doesn't really bother me, but if I'm really analyzing it, the, the profile of this clip, because you can see it's got this kind of point up here and it doesn't flatten out again. It can just be a little bit pokey, but not the end of the world. You can see there's a lot of space under it. They have countersunk this clip down into the scale material. I do wish that they had countersunk the screws into the clip so that those sat flush as well, but still plenty of room underneath for any pair of pants that I've had this knife in pocket in. Um, so yeah, the profile, there's no flipper tab or crazy jimping anywhere or anything that's like uh, bothersome in pocket. It's just nice, it's fairly slim. It's not very long at all, it's a pretty short knife. So very, very comfortable in pocket. Everything's rounded, it's nice. Yeah, so carry's very good. Um, let's talk action. Now, my favorite way to deploy a knife is to middle finger flick. I, my whole thing, for a, well, not my whole thing, one of my things for a while has been holes are greater than studs. I've got stickers that say it, it's on some of my shirts. It's like a joke, right? But it's true at the same time for me. I greatly prefer middle finger flicking knives with a hole for deployment than I do using thumb studs for deployment. This hole is excellent. It can thumb flick like an absolute dream, just so reliably. The detent is just excellent for it. It's so good. Um, and then middle finger flicking. It, there aren't, it's hard for me to think of a knife that's better for middle finger flicking than this. It's just truly, really, really good at it. Um, which makes sense to me. A Riat built knife <laughs> in this configuration, of course I love it. They are phenomenal at setting up detents and getting them just right and having them consistent. You'll notice as well, it's a pretty thick blade stock, but it's not a giant blade. And so it's not what I would call like guillotine drop shutty, but also a little shake and it coaxes down pretty easily. So if you just give it a little bit of muscle, you can get it right so it falls all the way in or it just gradually shakes down in. It's very nice, very smooth. There's nothing gritty about it. It's great. So action is phenomenal. I love middle finger flicking it. I even love thumb flicking it. <laughs> it's super fun to play with and I fidget with it a lot. Um, let's talk about cutting performance. So this blade, as I mentioned, is M390. It's a satin finish. You'll see it's a belt satin. Um, Kevin from Left ADC keeps going on about chalky grinds, like the certain grit that they use at Riat um, fingerprints up fairly easily. I, I don't typically have many issues with that. I guess I also just wipe my knife blades, knife blades down a lot when I'm handling them and using them before I put them back in pocket. I'll just use a handkerchief or my shirt and just give them a little wipe and then I don't have fingerprints all over them, but uh, they they do use a certain grit that kind of shows the grind lines quite a bit. So if you look at, let's see if I can get that, see the grinds. It looks really, really good to me. In fact, I kind of prefer this over the more shiny belt satins. I think it looks really good. But anyway, this 
M390 is a fairly thick stock, as I've already mentioned, but with this tall flat grind, it just comes down to an awesome cutting profile. It gets really stinking thin down here. It's not like the thinnest EDC knife I've ever felt behind the edge, but it's a nice thin cutting profile. And the nature of a flat grind, especially when it's really tall like this, for me, I just find slices really, really well. So I've done everything from obviously opening packages and mail like envelopes and stuff, opening like toy packages for my daughter, actual like internals of Barbie packaging and all of that. Um, I've processed cardboard for the dumpster. I have put it through a handful of zip ties. I've cut up an apple with it. I've done like pretty much everything with it. And for me, this knife I've carried once or twice as a primary, but it's really been more secondary size for me. And so as secondary knives go, this is on the bigger end of what I'd carry as a secondary, but it also feels remarkably capable as a secondary because it's one of those that can also fit and be like, if this is the primary that's in my pocket, it also doesn't feel too small either. I have been carrying a lot of bigger knives lately, so it's all relative, but this is super capable as a cutting tool and it just cuts really, really well. I like the tip that you get as well on this sheep's foot. It's just super usable it's much pokier, stabbier than I would expect it to be on a sheep's foot like this. And when I'm like making incisions down into boxes or whatever, it's just a great profile. Nice gradual belly all throughout. It works really, really well for me. So yeah, cutting is, is excellent. So I think basically I've said pretty much every element of this knife is excellent. Ergos are excellent. The carry is almost excellent. If, if they could push this clip two millimeters to the end of the knife, I would be like, you know, it would be so, so good. And I guess ergonomically, if the clip also had to kind of a flat spot on this end instead of just ramping up, that would also make it perfect. So it's like one degree off of perfect on ergos and on carry. I guess I'll also on ergos, if I'm being totally fair. I want the forward choil to be bigger, but it's so close. It's like, nitpicky little things and and i still find myself just loving it anyways um but yeah ergos and carry are both very good action i genuinely don't think there is anything i would change about it i love the action on this knife it is so good and just yeah it's addicting to play with um and then cutting is really really good so like objectively by the metrics i judge a knife by this is excellent it is a truly fantastic EDC knife. And I'm just really, really glad <laughs> that it even exists. You know, like I think it's so cool that Urban EDC Supply, who is like their own kind of retailer, they deal mostly with like weekly drops and they do it kind of a different way, that they took on this project with Voxnays and that they created this exclusive with him on a design that... I, I think was so worthy of being brought to market in a production way like this so that now hundreds of people have these instead of just 25 people. And I hope that it's a start of like more collaborative projects. And the fact that they chose React to build it, it just came out so flawless in terms of the execution of the build, like the action, the centering, the, everything about the fit and finish is just top notch. It's truly excellent. So, yeah, this knife is just one of the best that I've, that I've experienced in a long time. Um, and I've been experiencing a lot of good knives lately, but this is in good company and it still shines. It's just truly really, really good. So I guess that'll kind of be that. That'll be my full review on the Urban EDC Supply exclusive Jesper Voxnay's F5.5. And... Uh, Gosh, I love this knife. It's a truly good one. I can't see myself letting go of this knife anytime soon. It is so good. So thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.